What is going on everybody? I hope life is good and treating you well. Let me first start off by saying thank you for watching. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a method for one stick climbing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do commentary on this video or not. So if you would rather a video with music and no commentary, make sure you comment down below and let me know and I'll put that together. So the way that I'm climbing today is by utilizing my tether as opposed to my rappel rope. There are benefits and disadvantages to both styles. For example, when you climb with your tether, you don't need a quick link to get around branches. Whereas when you climb with your rappel rope, you need a quick link or some kind of shackle. You're also fighting the quick link or shackle on your rappel rope the whole time that you're climbing. Because of that added weight, it typically wants to slide down the tree, whereas with a tether, you don't really have that problem. But again, there's benefits and disadvantages to both styles. If you're climbing on your tether and you drop your stick, for example, you're gonna have to transfer over to your rappel rope. You can't just rappel down. Whereas if you're on your rappel rope and you drop something, you can just rappel down. And for that reason, I always carry with me a hand descender and a foot loop. You could also use your platform, anything that you can stand on to take pressure off of your tether so that you can transfer it onto your rappel line. Another thing is, is when you're climbing on your tether, you also have the risk of dropping your rappel rope itself. And so for that reason, I always clip the bottom of my rappel rope to the inside of my bag. However, not all bags have a clip like that. So if I didn't have that clip, then I would either clip the bottom of my rappel rope to my saddle or I would clip it to my gear strap before I bring my rappel rope out to attach it to the tree or just use an S beaner and clip it somewhere onto your bag. Now, whenever I'm getting ready to make a move, the first thing I do is I drop down onto my bottom step. And what that does is it gets me a little bit lower and closer to the stick. So that way I can swing off to the side and hook the stick underneath with my foot while I can work the cam cleat with one hand. That makes it so that I don't have to roll over onto my side and I can disconnect my stick from a sitting position. Once I have my stick disconnected from the tree, I then try to get it as high as I can while remaining under the tether. Once I have my stick attached to the tree, I put my foot in the bottom step of the aider and at the same time I pull out on the bottom of the stick as I step into the aider with all my weight. That typically sets the stick really well. And then I continue to climb. What I found was easiest for me is right before the last move, I take my platform and I attach it to the tree and I attach it wherever it's easiest for me. Typically that's around shoulder to head height for me. Um, you could do higher, you could do lower, but I attach my platform, I set it while I'm still standing on my stick, and then I make my final move. That way I can get my stick level with my platform. By having your stick level with your platform, it allows you to be able to step off onto the side of it. Most of the time, I'll bring in two or three squirrel steps and I'll set them up around the tree and they're really comfortable, especially for all day sits because it kind of feels like you're sitting on a motorcycle and it's a really comfortable position to sit in. Also, they're really small, they're easy to pack and they don't really take up any space or weight. I also wanted to mention that everything you see in this video the one stick, the platform, the adjustable aider, the saddle, that all that stuff is uh, made by me. I made the saddle about a year ago. The, the platform is new. I just made that a couple of weeks ago. The one stick, I made that a few months ago. Um, the only thing I didn't have videos on is the saddle. Everything else I have videos on if you're interested in watching them. I'll leave a link for them on YouTube up in the right hand corner. Now, whenever I'm looking for a tree, there's a few things that I look for right off the bat. Number one is the size, and that really depends on how I'm climbing. If I'm SRT climbing, then the size 
doesn't really matter because those big oak trees are actually pretty nice for SRT and, uh, and DRT. If I'm one stick climbing, then I'm really looking for that telephone pole basketball size tree. Something that I can reach my arms around and touch. Because with the bigger trees, it's a lot harder, especially when you're one stick climbing. It is doable, but it's just a lot harder to do. You really got to swing your rope around with momentum and it's harder to pull the tether up itself. The other thing I look for is I want trees that are close by. I want trees that are overhanging that um, have a bunch of branches that I can maybe climb up into. I look for two trees that are close together or even one tree that splits and wise. Now once I'm up in my spot and I'm standing in my platform, I no longer have use for my lineman belt. So what I do is I turn that into a secondary bridge. And I also carry a section of am steel with a Prusik knot on it. That acts as a secondary tether. That way I can try to stay connected at two points whenever I can. And whenever I'm climbing SRT or if I'm climbing DRT or rappelling down, I take that lineman's belt and I clip it into the same carabiner as my bridge. That way I'm connected through my linesman belt and I'm also connected through my bridge. I try to double up every chance I get. On my rappel rope, I'm using a 11 mil Sterling static rope. And then I also have a Grigri and a quick link. I tied the quick link on with a scaffold knot. I'm also using a 3D printed tether locker. And that's to help keep the tether in spot so it doesn't fall down and slide down the tree. There's a little loop behind the actual locker itself where I can clip my carabiner in. And once I get to the bottom, I can pull that. It'll pop the lock off of the quick link and it'll also pull it from right behind that knot. And so it'll help pull it down a lot easier. Now when I start my rappel, because I climbed up on my tether, I have to transfer from my tether over to my rappel rope. And I do that by attaching my rappel rope up above my tether. I then clip into my Grigri. I also clip my linesman slash bridge into my Grigri as well. I am still wearing my back band and I tend to rappel wearing my back band just about every single time. But I have to transfer my weight from my tether to my rappel rope. And I do that by pulling up on my rappel rope on my Grigri and putting slack into my tether. But I don't take it off. I continue to break down all of my gear and then right before I rappel, I'll pull my tether. I don't climb up with my backpack. However, I do rappel down with my backpack on. I also have a S clip in the back of my saddle that I clip my platform into when I'm rappelling down. And then when I disassemble and break down my one stick, I take the aider and I put my arm through it and I basically put it on like a bag and it just rides down with me. There's a bunch of different rappel devices that you can get and they all range for different prices. The Grigri's and the Mad Rocks are a little more money, but that's because they're a lot easier to use. You can get a figure eight and stuff like that that are a lot cheaper, and I think they're just as easy to use. I just prefer to use a Grigri. I also carry a figure eight as a backup rappel device, and that's in one of my pouches on my saddle. One of the reasons I enjoy saddle hunting so much is because everything is customizable. You know, you can one stick, you can SRT climb, you can use regular climbing sticks, you can, you can go in light, you can go in a little bit heavier for comfort. I set up different bags, different packs for different occasions. If I'm going in deep and I'm gonna be doing a lot of walking, then I'll probably one stick and I'll go as light as I can. If I'm not going that deep, then I'll probably use climbing sticks and I'll be a little bit heavier. I might use a bigger platform and I can customize it to what I'm gonna need for each particular hunt. 
I'll set up presets in the off season and I'll hunt those SRT. If I'm not going back that far or if I don't plan on doing a whole lot of walking, but maybe I do plan on sitting for a longer period of time, then I might bring a bigger platform and a set of squirrel steps and I'll set up more for comfort. But it's really what works for you. And that's really what it comes down to. What are your needs? And you customize your saddle setup to those needs. I personally have a bag for SRT, I have a bag for one sticking, I have a bag for climbing sticks. I basically have a setup for each style of hunting that I do. I hope this helped guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.